Hi, I'm glad you stopped by. Why did God hide so much truth in parables? Now you know there's a reason. That reason is because instead of an ear to hear the truth from a heart that is seeking truth, they have itching ears, ears itching to hear pleasing things, approvals, fables, false doctrine, sweet lies, and so forth. From Second Timothy, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. And that's something we see quite a bit of in the feast days, the sacred name, and things like that. So these things are not present truth. So what I did is I went through the Old Testament, and I looked at all the times the word here was used. And this is when Joseph's brothers is taken from Genesis 42:21. So Joseph's brothers were in Egypt. And one of the brothers is commenting, you know, when we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. So there are many times, there's um, over 150 times right here in this lineup that I have found where God is asking us, right? The Bible is for Christians. And if you're hearing you're watching this video, this is for you. And God is constantly saying, hear, hear me, hear me. This first one here, Genesis 49, 2, hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Hear now my words. Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Hear now, ye rebels. Hear, O Israel. And by the way, you know that we are all Israelites by faith, because we are children of Abraham. And over and over here throughout the Old Testament, and this is just the times it very plainly says here, here say I pray you, hear the words of thine handmaid. Now this is part of a parable, mind you, but nevertheless it is absolutely applicable to us today. Here we have, hear the wisdom of Solomon. And on and on and on it goes. It is um, just amazing. Proverbs 1, a wise man will hear. And other just constant, hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. So in Isaiah, chapter 6, 9, and 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Now this heart business is very much 
a key because God reads our heart. You cannot, no one can fool God. Um, it is critical that you understand with your heart and make, you don't want your heart to be made fat. What is fat? Interesting question. Now that gets into how to study the Bible because it would be good to do a little study on the word fat and see what it is. Okay, make the heart of this people fat. We don't want that. We want out of a pure heart seeking truth. So on it goes here, all through Isaiah, all through the Old Testament. Here's another one. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. And then in Jeremiah, hear now this, O foolish people and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. This is absolutely astonishing to sit back, do some of these studies, and see how often, you know, and there's another place where it says, I called and none did answer. I think I have that in here. Anyway, um, Son of man, all my words that I speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. See how important your heart is? It's amazing. And on through Ezekiel, right down here, Zechariah and Malachi, the last of the Old Testament. I did not go through the New Testament because this took quite a bit of time. He cried and they would not hear. You know, this business is very, very important. Matthew chapter 13, 9 to 17. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. You're going to have an ear to hear if your heart is right, if your heart is not right, you're going to be not understanding what some of these parables are. Verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because... It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Remember the parable of the talents, right? The one who went and buried his talent? brought it back to him. Here's the one talent that you gave me. I buried it so you could have it back. And he's like, take it away from him and give it to him that has more. And somebody said, but Lord, he has 10. And he said to, him, to them almost exactly the same thing. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. And continuing on verse 13, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, 
and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Why? Because their hearts were right. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Today, right now, we have all the light from years. We are living in the great focal point of the final movements. Christ could come this next year. Be ready. So it says here, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable he spake not unto them. What is a parable? I will incline mine ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. So a parable is a dark saying. Then we have further confirmation of this from Mark chapter 4. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve. So this is a key point. They that were about him with the twelve, so it wasn't just the twelve, is those that had a heart into this thing. And they wanted, they were seeking the truth. And the same thing is true of you. God will show you things and reveal things to you that you need to know. But you need to make sure your heart is right to God and dig into the God's Word so that you can understand and that you will understand these Proverbs because the Bible is its own dictionary and it just it d defines so many things psalms 119 105 thy word is a lamp and then the words unto my feet tell us what the lamp is for or what god's word is for and our feet represent our actions right of course one of the definitions Okay, so this Mark chapter 4 is a repeat of what it said in Matthew. Very, pretty much the same thing. Then we have Deuteronomy 29.29. 29. Very, very important text. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Why? That we may do all the words of this law. And this is very, very important. We need to not mess with things that are not revealed to us. But the things that are revealed do belong to us. God bless your study.